Good morning and welcome to this extraordinarily important conference. Uh, I'm sorry I cannot be with you personally today, but I'm glad to be with you visually uh, for sure. You know, it's interesting thinking about a conference on trade. I think trade has really gotten a bum rap. It's gotten a bum rap in Europe, certainly gotten a bum rap in the United States. We saw that during the presidential campaign from both sides of the political spectrum, by the way. And I think one reason for this is there's a reality that uh, we as societies need to focus on a little bit more. And that is with all the uh, great progress that we've seen through the rapid pace of globalization, through changes in technology, uh, that um, there are a lot of people who've been left behind. There are a lot of families, particularly in America, maybe not in big metropolitan areas that have trade-related economies like Los Angeles, but certainly in the middle of the country, uh, who have um, suffered negative effects of trade or jobs being shipped overseas, and yet have not, they don't really feel the diverse but very real impact of trade. Now, everybody knows when a plant closes down and it's in their community, but they don't necessarily recognize or understand that the things that they can buy in the store are now much cheaper and that they have a much wider range of choices. And they're not necessarily thinking about the jobs that are created uh, for you know, their children or potentially for their grandchildren as a result of these changes in society. And the reason I say trade gets a bum rap is this. You know, people can't vote to slow down globalization. You know, they really can't. Those container ships are coming, the world is getting smaller, and technology helps on that. They cannot vote to stop the next generation of robots, or driverless cars, or the next generation of even iPhones, and the kinds of things that we use to communicate uh, so effectively with one another. But they can register their political opposition to a trade deal. And so what's happened in America and I think in parts of Europe is that trade deals which if you think about it are actually the best way to manage the impact of globalization and the rapid changes in technology but the trade deals have become the proxy for people expressing their concern and this is something that I think we need to address and we need to focus on and we need to do a much better job of explaining not just the benefits of trade, but how uh, a, a particular trade deal will, in fact, improve the economy for uh, working men and women across the United States. And also recognize that there probably will be losers from a given deal or not, and have policies in place that will address that fact. And I think only if we do this, Will we get to a point where good, sound, rules-based trading agreements will be politically feasible so that we can get them through Congress? Back in the Clinton era, when I was in the White House, I had the privilege of running the, what we called the War Room to get the Uruguay Round of the GATT, which created the WTO through Congress. And at that point in time, we had about 100 Democratic votes. Not quite. It was probably high 80s, low 90s. And, um, uh, and then I had the opportunity as uh, uh, ambassador to Germany, we had the G7 uh, that took place in, uh, in Germany down in Bavaria and of course the president was there. He also brought with him several Democratic members of Congress because right then was when the vote was coming up for TPA, uh, for Trade Promotion Authority, what we used to call Fast Track. And uh, had dinner with those um, uh, members of Congress and we really talked about the importance of it and I was stunned when I heard that for TPA uh, the Democrats would probably only probably 26 27 Democrats would vote for uh, that agreement that's down from where we you know almost one-third of where we were in the 1990s and then of course we see the presidential campaign with much of the Sanders surge being uh, part of a anti uh, fueled by an anti-trade message and with very much with Donald Trump going hard on an anti-trade message, threatening to rip up trade deals, immediately pulling us out of uh, TPP, uh, which I think would have been quite beneficial, certainly for this economy. And actually, uh, it, TPP, ironically, would have been 
a renegotiation of NAFTA in a certain to a certain extent because Mexico is a was a signatory party to that. But that's where we are today, and uh, and and as I said, I think it's unfair, but it's real. It's a political reality, and it needs to be addressed. So hopefully, during the course of this conference, you can explore some of those ideas about how we can better structure trade agreements to um, both help fuel our economic growth, manage the negative impacts of globalization and the technology revolution, uh, and um, really create the kind of shared prosperity for all of us. And one more thing about that. We live in a dangerous world. There's a lot of talk and a lot of focus these days about national security, about keeping Americans safe. Let me tell you something, there is no more important element of national security than shared prosperity around the world. If people don't have to worry about what they're going to do for a living or how they're going to feed their kids or uh, just what their environment is like or whether they're going to have to move because of uh, the area that they used to farm has become desert land because of climate change. If they don't have to worry so much about those things because those communities have been invested in because the international trade that we have engaged in has helped to create jobs that have brought up the economies in some of uh, the disadvantaged and depressed areas, you're much less likely to see a rise of terrorism. You're much less likely to see um, the kinds of uh, tribal uh, conflicts that we see around the world that as we know in today's interconnected age can affect us very, very dramatically and painfully here at home. So this is not just an economic issue. This is a national security issue. It is a personal safety issue as well. So keep that in mind. Thank you. Have a great conference. I'm sorry I can't be with you, but I'll be with you for the next one. Take care.